Hello Ferrari fans. So today we're going to take a look at this really early Ferrari from 1959. It's called the 250 GT California Spider. Um, this car was designed specifically for the North American market. And uh, the coach builder Scaglietti uh, is uh, credited with making the bodywork for this car. It, uh, the bodywork would have an aluminum hood, aluminum doors, the trunk, and then everything else I guess is made of steel. It's going to be powered by a 3 liter Colombo V12 engine making around 240 horsepower and it rolls on 16 inch wheels. And 50 of these were made in the long wheelbase version this generation. And then later on in 1960 they created a short wheelbase version. Uh, being such an old Ferrari, very expensive. In 2007, one sold for around $5 million. And then uh, the former Top Gear presenter, Chris Evans, bought one for $12 million back in 2008. I'm sure nowadays it might have even doubled in price because they're so rare. If you've ever seen an old movie from 1986 called Ferris Bueller's Day Off, this is the car that was featured in that movie. It's a good movie, by the way, if you guys uh, are into the movies. Okay, so I know it's going to take a while to put this together because I have to pop in these chrome wheels into these tires, and that takes some time. So I'm not going to torture you guys making me watch this. But let's just take a closer look at the packaging if anyone's interested. If you want to pause, these are the other cars that are available. I've done a, a video on this one. And then all these other ones are available from Kyosho and other brands, so I probably won't get these. But uh, this one, I don't think any other brand is tackled, so. I don't know what this Demitas coffee is. I tried to find out about it, couldn't find anything. And unfortunately, on the back, there's no specs here, like on some other uh, Dido, Dido products. And then all this stuff, I can't read, so. Um, I'm pretty sure, on my experience, we'll know when this model first came out. It should be molded into the base pan of the model. But anyways, I'm gonna cut away, and uh, we'll come back to a finished car. Okay guys, so it wasn't too painful to put back together. Uh, let's take a closer look at this model now. So, as I suspected, it does say here on the bottom that this model uh, was cast in uh, 2003. So it's a pretty old model. And uh, being by Kyosho and being the color red, it's typical that it would have paint problems. So right here you can see the, the paint rash developing. Uh, so that's too bad. Uh, okay, so anyways, uh, the wheels, you know, they're not very great by today's standards. It's pretty hard to make wire wheels, at least on a car that model this inexpensive. So you got to live with it if you want to have a model of this particular Ferrari. Okay, so, you know, this is molded in. It would have been nice if this was painted silver, like on the real car. I think this must be aluminum on the real car. But, you know, for an old model, the panel lines are pretty good. They're not uh, too uh, wide. Okay, so going to the front here in Kyosho fashion, we have these plastic uh, headlights, so that's pretty good. But unfortunately, the uh, Ferrari logo is huge, and it's a decal, so that might fall off later. And it also seems to be crooked, so not very good uh, application there. This plastic piece is pretty nicely detailed, it's just not pushed in all the way. If you look from the front here, it, it wasn't set into the body properly. I might take it apart later, trim it down, or pull it out and re-glue it in later. That's the beauty of the screwed together bodies. So I can fix that myself if I wanted to. But it looks like we have some orange painted uh, fog lights here. Although on the real car they're silver or white, so not sure why they went with orange. Okay, uh, no paint here. Would have been nice to have some black paint there for the vent into the engine. Oh well. Okay, but yeah, panel lines are pretty good there. We got some three-dimensional uh, wiper blades, but uh, they're kind of weird because they don't vanish down below. You know, they're kind of just floating on the windshield. So that's kind of odd. All right, this side here, uh, no problems really. Looks pretty good actually, so good. All right, so the back, we got the nice fake license plate, Dido 2003 MA, whatever that is. And unfortunately, Dido's uh, have just the uh, painted taillights in most instances. Uh, I do have one model that has plastic inserts. I think it was the Celica 1600 GT, if I recall correctly. But here we got the Ferrari printing here on the back. It's okay. And then uh, we got four exhaust tips, which are accurate to the car. It's just that they're not painted silver. These are chrome exhaust tips. Uh, so it would be nice to have that. It is nice that it has a sep these separate plastic bumpers though. They're not just molded into the casting and painted silver. So, 
And this one again isn't really even. I guess I could take it out and push it back in again. You see, it's too much of a gap there. Okay, and then uh, the interior, it's not, you know, it's not awesome. It's alright though, you know, they got some molded engages and stuff like that. I feel like the winch, the, the dashboard's a bit too low though. It should be risen up here, right? I suppose if you wanted to, you could trim off this back end and then it'll pop up, but I'm not sure if I want to go through that effort. So, okay, anyways, that's a pretty quick review because it's a pretty simple model. I, th I think these Dido's must have been really cheap. If anyone knows how much these really sold for back in 2003, that'd be great to know. But uh, I do not know, so can't help you guys out. Let's give it a little spin here on the tiled uh, Spin Master go round machine. -y. And I mentioned uh, at the beginning that this thing was uh, made by Scaglietti's uh, coachwork, coachworks, the uh, body. And so Scaglietti was later on consumed by Ferrari the Ferrari Corporation themselves and they still make aluminum bodies and this is the Ferrari F12 made by the old coachworks so we get a comparison about the size between a modern and old car and just for an open top version this is a Pininfarina design the 458 so you know cars have uh, grown quite a bit since the uh, 60s or in this case the late 50s and uh, that's just the way it is Okay, so yeah, the Dido, if it had plastic taillights, it'd be a great model. I think it's an okay model. It's kind of like pretty much green light quality, I guess. But uh, what I like about it is there are no opening panels, so all the panel gaps look consistent. So that I do like that over a green light. So, okay, well, it's spun around. You can decide for yourself. Pause the video when you need to and decide if you want to chase down one of these Didos yourself. All right, then, I'll see you guys around. Take care.